Welcome to this podcast. This is a portion of enjoyment from the Holy Word for Morning Revival for today, on the general topic of, laboring on the all-inclusive Christ typified by the good land for the building up of the church as the body of Christ, for the reality and the manifestation of the kingdom, and for the bride to make herself ready for the Lord's coming, 2023 Winter Training, Week 2, Day 3. The title of this portion of enjoyment is, See the Principle of Idolatry and Flee from Idolatry to Enjoying Christ in Spirit. We hope you enjoy the Lord while listening to this portion and we welcome your comments with what you have enjoyed. If we want to fully possess Christ as the good land, we need to flee from idolatry, we need to see what is the principle of the golden calf idol and refuse to have anything in our heart that we love more than the Lord, and we need to have the enjoyment of the Lord with no form of worldly amusement and entertainment. Amen. On the positive side, we want to enjoy the all-inclusive Christ and possess Him as the reality of the good land. On the negative side, There are principles that we see in the Old Testament with the children of Israel which should be a warning to us in our Christian life today. One of these principles is the matter of having a heart of unbelief. Satan, God's enemy and our enemy, is working tirelessly and continually to wear us out and cause us to think that it is impossible for us to enter into the enjoyment of the all-inclusive Christ. The people of Israel reached the border with the good land of Canaan, but ten out of twelve spies brought an evil report, and that caused the people to have an evil heart of unbelief. The land was right there, within their reach, and they were just about to enter in, for God promised them the land, however, they did not believe, and so they died in the wilderness and their children entered into the good land. O Lord! Our unbelief toward the Lord concerning His Word, and His promises, is a rebellion against Him. We may think that we're realistic and practical, for we have so many weaknesses, failures, and mistakes, that it seems impossible, humanly speaking, for us to enjoy the all-inclusive Christ. But God is not after our being practical and realistic, He wants to infuse us with Himself as our faith so that He may believe in us and He may do everything in us and for us. Amen. If we have an evil heart of unbelief, we will murmur and be discontented, even as the children of Israel were. They murmured very much against God and against Moses. They had mutterings, grumblings, and complaining, and each one of them murmured in their tent. O Lord! Many times we may not murmur out loudly in the church life or before the saints, but at home, in our tent, we may murmur, for we may be discontented with the church life or with some of the saints. May the Lord save us from murmurings and complaining, and may all our murmuring be turned into praising. Whenever we sense we're about to murmur, we need to turn our murmuring into praising. In this way, the enemies and problems become our food, and the Lord has a way to gain us more. See the principle of idolatry and flee from idolatry to enjoying Christ and worshipping God. If we as believers in Christ are going to fully possess and enjoy the all-inclusive Christ as the good land, the Apostle Paul says that we must flee from idolatry, 1 Corinthians 10 14. Here he was referring to the children of Israel's idolatry in worshipping the golden calf, Exo. 32-1-6. Paul applied the children of Israel's worshipping the golden calf to the New Testament believers, we need to flee from idolatry. We should not think that we don't have an idol and we're immune from this. The golden calf was an idol made by God's redeemed people. They made the calf and stood up to play, thus indulging in revelry or boisterous merrymaking. To have an idol in our heart is to have anything within us that we love more than the Lord and that replaces the Lord in our life, Ezekiel 14 3. As genuine children of God, we need to be on the alert to guard ourselves against idols, 1 John 5 21, from all the substitutes and replacements of Christ in our life. When we speak of idols, we don't mean merely the outward idols, the idols that people have as big statues in temples and they bow down before them. In Ezekiel 14 3 we are told that people have idols in their hearts. We can have idols in our hearts, even though we are genuine children of God. We need to be on the alert to guard ourselves from idols and flee from idolatry. We must be warned by the principle of the golden calf idol, an idol made by God's redeemed people to make them an idolatrous camp, 1 Corinthians 10 5-7. Today in the Roman Catholic Church we see many idols, including statues that they say represent Jesus, Mary, and others from the Bible. Also, Many genuine Christians have pictures of Jesus praying or something like that in their house, these are all idols. Oh, Lord Jesus! When it comes to idolatry, there are five main principles, we need to see the principle of idolatry and flee from idolatry today. First, self-beautification leads to idolatry, Ezo. 32-1-4, 33-5-6, Genesis 35-1-4. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God did something miraculous, He put something in the Egyptians to give them gold and all kinds of possessions, which later were used to build the tabernacle. However, before this gold could become part of the tabernacle, the people of Israel used it to beautify themselves, both the males and the females. 
and then later Aaron made a golden calf idol with these earrings and nose rings of gold. Self-beautification eventually leads to idolatry. Our only beauty is God Himself, and He is beautifying the church as the house of His beauty so that He may be beautified, Isaiah 67, 19, 21, Ephesians 5 26-27. In the expression of our self, there is division, but in the corporate expression of God, the divine glory, there is oneness, John 17 22-24. Our work is our living, and we should glorify and express God on earth, not to beautify ourselves or seek to be beautiful apart from God, v. 4, 1 Corinthians 10 31, Isaiah 43 7. In our speaking to others and in the church life we should not seek our own glory by preaching ourselves, rather, we should preach Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as slaves to serve the believers, John 7 17, 2 Corinthians 4 5. God is our beauty. We should enjoy God and be filled with God. We should simply enjoy the Lord in His Word and allow Him to beautify us and make us the house of His beauty. The second principle of idolatry is Satan's usurping what God has given us in order to make it a waste, exo. 11-2-3, 12-35-36, 25-2-8, 35-4-9. Idolatry is our abusing what God has given us and not using God's gifts, both material and spiritual, for God's purpose. We see this in the fact that the gold given to the children of Israel by God through the Egyptians before their exodus from Egypt was to be used for the building of the tabernacle. However, before the gold could be used for God's purpose, it was usurped by Satan and used by God's people to make an idol. O oh Lord! We need to pray that the Lord would save us from misusing the gifts He gave us and from self-beautifying ourselves. We need to flee from idolatry in any of its forms. When Moses saw the golden calf and what the people were doing, he was so appalled that he threw down the tablets of stones inscribed by God's own hands and broke them. Today it is easy for those who are gifted among us to have their gifts usurped by the enemy for his purpose and for idolatry in its subtle forms. May we flee from idolatry and serve God and worship Him in simplicity, one with the Lord. It is good to pray to the Lord and tell Him. Lord Jesus, we love You. We love only You, and we worship only You. We refuse to be usurped by Satan for his purposes. We worship only You and nothing else. O Lord, all the things You gave us, all the abilities and skills You put in us, we want to use them for your purpose, for the building up of the church. We do not want to be usurped by the enemy and be drawn into idolatry. We want to flee from idolatry and beware of idols. May nothing take your place in all our heart. O Lord, we thank you for your gifts, we want these gifts to be used in resurrection for the building up of the church. Amen, Lord, we come to you to enjoy you in your word and be beautified by you to be the house of your beauty for your corporate expression on the earth. O Lord, our work on earth is our living to glorify to express God on earth. We want to flee from idolatry and worship only God, loving God and enjoying God. Idolatry is the worship of the things we enjoy, but the enjoyment of God is not a form of worldly amusement and entertainment. One of the most striking things related to the matter of idolatry is entertainment and amusement. In Exo. 32-6, 18-19 we see that the people of Israel didn't just make a golden calf which they call their God, but they sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to dance and have a party. Idolatry is the worship of the things we enjoy, the worship of amusement and entertainment. Wow! This cannot be more true today. All the TV shows, movies, and media are focused on one thing, entertainment. All the social media and all the social media networks are focused on entertaining people. Even in the church life, there may be a way to turn the enjoyment of Christ into something that is entertaining, something that is entertaining people and is fun. Oh, Lord Jesus! God does indeed want to be our amusement and entertainment, and He wants to give us to drink of the rivers of His pleasures, P.S.A. 36-8-9, but we cannot make the enjoyment of the Lord a form of worldly amusement and entertainment. In the church life in the Lord's recovery the Lord is bringing us back to the enjoyment of Christ, this enjoyment of Christ, however, is in spirit, is pure, and has nothing to do with worldly entertainment and amusement. Sadly to say, if we consider the situation among Christians today, there's a clear desire for entertainment and amusement. It is actually difficult to find a so-called church service that does not have some sort of entertainment to attract people. If there's no entertainment, people don't come. Oh Lord! People like to go to church to be entertained. This is the principle of the golden calf. People worship what they enjoy, their entertainment and amusement. They may say that they do this in the name of the Lord, but they use worldly means, music, drama, and many things that are not purely of the Lord and for His glory. When Moses came down from the mountain with Joshua and the people were worshipping the golden calf, they heard the noise from the camp and Joshua thought that is a sound of war. Moses, however, 
knew it was the sound of idolatrous people having a party, it was neither the sound of defeat nor the sound of triumph but the sound of singing coming from the idolatrous people. Their singing was a form of entertainment, it was not part of their holy worship of the Lord. When we exercise our spirit to sing to the Lord, we worship Him and enjoy Him, however, when we bring in worldly means, entertainment, and amusement, our sound is that of idolatrous people making a noise. We need to flee idolatry in all its forms, and especially we need to flee idolatry that is in our worship to God. We don't need to be religious or formal, but we need to sing to the Lord with our spirit. We sing to Him with our spirit and with our mind. Paul warns the Corinthians in this way, neither become idolaters, as some of them did, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and stood up to play, 1 Corinthians 10 7, Exa. 32-6, C. A. Coates, a Bible expositor, said that they sported, especially during the weekend, people care only for eating, drinking, and sporting. When we come together with the saints and sing the holy hymns, we need to have a reverent attitude toward the Lord and not turn the hymns into something that is fun. To play is to frolic, to joke, and to act, perform, or speak with little seriousness. To play is to behave playfully and uninhibitedly, and it is to engage in hilarity, that is, in high-spirited fun. O Lord! We may pray read the Word of God with some young ones or new ones, and we may want to make it fun, we should resist the temptation of turning our prayer reading into something amusing or entertaining. May we flee from idolatry. May we mean business with the Lord and not fall into the snare of the enemy. May we enjoy the Lord in a pure way, with no amusement or entertainment, and may we exercise our spirit to contact the Lord and worship Him in spirit. May the Lord save us from any idolatry and may we see the principle of idolatry to run away from it in all its forms. Lord Jesus, we love you and we want to enjoy you in a pure way. We want to have the enjoyment of the Lord with no form of worldly amusement and entertainment. Amen, Lord, save us from being playful or joking when we enjoy you. Save us from joking or acting, performing or speaking with little seriousness when we come to your word and when we enjoy you in the meetings. Save us, dear Lord Jesus, from engaging in hilarity or high-spirited fun in the church life. May you be our only enjoyment in our spirit. May we flee from idolatry in all its forms and stay away from the principle of idolatry. O Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and in truthfulness. We want to drink of you as the living water and drink deeply from the river of your pleasures. Amen, Lord, with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. You are our enjoyment, our amusement, and our entertainment.